Okay, so as you can see there from the picture there that um, uh, I will be talking about Dark Souls in a way, but not the actual tabletop role-playing game, but how to make your D&D 5e campaigns into Dark Souls, which were a very popular way that when I ran it as a GM, now, I haven't played 5e in quite some time because I have gone over to Pathfinder 2e and it works pretty well where I don't have to kind of mess around with the monsters because they're already pretty set and they're already pretty challenging as it is. So, <clears throat> right off the bat, if you're going to run a Dark Souls-esque type adventure or campaign, there's a couple of things you have to keep in mind to make it work. One, you have to make sure your players are for that. Because a lot of the D&D 5e community, from my experience and from reading online and watching videos, is that players like to play 5e where their players never die. They feel like gods. And by level 4 or 5, they can take down an epic boss with ease. Now, having said that, it really depends on how you structure your adventure or if you're going off of the modules that they're offering and what have you. So one thing I have noticed with the d and 5e modules and Pathfinder Adventure Paths is they have one common thing is that they have areas or parts in that campaign that have a monsters that are a couple of levels higher than the player characters, which can lead to problems in that encounter where the spike all of a sudden goes from either easy to medium to severe encounter or deadly, which never made sense to me on, on that, you know, if yeah, because mainly these stories are not open world, so they're kind of structured in the way that the player characters go from point A to point B. So it's kind of like Dark Souls 1, Dark Souls 2, Dark Souls 3, the video games where they're linear. As opposed to having an open world-esque type campaign that I personally run in my homebrews. <clears throat> so there are areas that are higher than the PCs, but they're well made aware of that. And if they go towards those areas, knowing full well that there's something there that's um, higher than them, that's on them. But that's their choice of whether or not they want to face that and challenge. Okay. So getting back to what I started with, your players have to know that you're going to be running a Dark Souls X type 5e game where the possibility of player characters dying is very much alive, okay? Number two, you should have encounters that are, depending on how you're running the adventure, one to two levels higher than the player characters. And you have to also consider the monsters, you're, or one monster that you're going to be throwing at the players. <clears throat> so... For instance, you won't have a level 20 dragon going up against a group that's level 5 of 5 or 6 players because that would be just, what's the point? Because uh, the AC would be so high that the player characters couldn't hit it or the hit points would be so high that it would take them forever to destroy it. <clears throat> Consider also... When you're choosing monsters, if it's going to be a single monster against the group, how more powerful enough to handle on their own? Or is it going to be a mob of little type of creatures there where there's enough there to give the players issues and they also will be a couple levels above, okay? <clears throat> you want the encounters to be beatable but you also want them to be very challenging and more challenging than normal, okay? 5e is a little bit difficult because <clears throat> the AC doesn't go up. Not like Pathfinder 2e where like the PC's low levels increase their stats 
D and D is different. Now again, I haven't played it in some time. Maybe some new rules have changed, but I don't think so from things I've seen. But um, again, <clears throat> you want uh, the challenge to be there for Five E enough. So I'm thinking that you look outside of the normal monsters in the core books, going with homebrew monsters instead. Ones in particular that are unique, that will give players headaches. For instance, there uh, or there's a couple that I used in my campaign from uh, PDF uh, Homebrew Monsters. One that attacked magic users, um, actual slots. So it siphoned the magical slots so they weren't able to cast spells. Against melee type of um, PCs, it wouldn't really affect them, but against magic users, which most players like playing, it would be a problem for them. Another creature had exhaustion as one of its main forms of um, attacks. Now, at the time, exhaustion has... Um, it was different than uh, they changed it. So from what I recall, exhaustion in D&D was six levels. <clears throat> With each level of exhaustion, it would just get your stats down, and then by the sixth level, you, the PC would just die, and that'd be it. There'd be no resurrection involved. Um, then I believe they changed it to a point system. I can't remember off the top of my head what all the points were. Um, <clears throat> or um, you can make up your kind of home if you want to homebrew it that way. But the main reason that creature was tough because exhaustion, there wasn't, if anything, that could counter exhaustion. So when the exhaustion final level hit, that was pretty much curtains for the place player character. So... There are some examples of some monsters that you can use for a challenge against your PCs. Um, honestly, um, homebrew creatures probably work best for this type of Dark Soul campaign that you're going to run. Um, you can use, obviously, some of the ones from the main books. That's as long as they can put up a fight against the uh, player characters. Um, Lastly, magical items is kind of different too if you're running a Dark Souls-esque type 5e campaign where you'll be giving PCs access to uncommon items and rare items and end-game epic items. Uh, they'll be getting them a little more earlier than usual. Um, you have to pick and choose when they find or get these items, same as you would any campaign, except <clears throat> these magical items will help them overcome almost impossible challenges and make them just hard. Okay. So in a way, yeah, the encounter should be moderate to extreme between there, okay, for any of these encounters. Winnable, but difficult, even at their levels, whatever their levels are. You hope that all your player characters work as a team to bring down the mob or bring down the epic boss. Okay, Combat will be key and will be heavy in your Dark Soul campaigns because um, that's really what makes it unique. You will have your story there. You will have your role-playing sessions, of course. But again, this video is just kind of going over what I've done <clears throat> to make a successful 5e Dark Souls run. Uh, that's how I got my groups today. So Pathfinder 2e is very challenging. So that's why it's funny that a lot of uh, 5e, former 5e players quit, rage quit, because they realize that their characters can die. And Pathfinder 2E doesn't hold your hand, so to speak, 
there are monsters, even at level 10, that can take down an entire party. And that's the realization of that. That's why Pathfinder 2 is becoming more and more popular because people love the challenge of it and they love the exploratory side of it. And the combat system has appealed to those people that were former 5e players because it gives them more for what they're looking for. Now there's going to be lots of 5e players still around that will stick with 5e and not bother with any other game. That's just the way it's going to be. But if you're a GM and you're still playing 5e and you want to spice things up and your players are okay with it, try a Dark Souls way to bring sort of life into the challenge of 5e. Uh, There are... it, It really ends up being your gaming world, your story, your homebrewed. You you can even take a D&D module like, I don't know, Icewind Dale and switch out mon- certain monsters at certain points to make it a little more tough if you want to do that. But keep with the theme and, and the story itself, okay? You don't want to take out the Strahd uh, in um that campaign uh because he's a main character okay what you can do is up his stats up his abilities and kind of craft him into making him that epic end boss that he should be okay if you're going to make your own monsters and i'll leave off with this remember not to make them possible to beat make them a challenge to beat okay you want them to have offensive skills or offensive abilities and defensive abilities or skills spells all that stuff to make the players think well this guy's no pushover it's not necessarily a high um, hp pool that's going to prevent the players from destroying that monster because you have to remember that the way 5e is set up is that by certain levels, the PCs are pretty much going to run over everything because of the structure of the system. So it's up to you as a GM to see where challenge can be put in your game, whether it be a module itself or a homebrew campaign to where you can kind of balance out that sort of power creep, okay? 5e, I played, and I liked the beginning, in the beginning, that it, was, it still was a fair system. Would I go back and play it again? No, because I like Pathfinder 2e, I like the way it's structured, and I don't have to create house rules for it in terms of how the game's played, and that's fantastic. But I will say that there's nothing wrong with homebrewing your own rules, making sure your players understand those rules, making sure that they will understand that there's going to be a higher challenge in your campaign or campaigns, depending on how long you're going to run it, your group for And knowing that your players will accept that and have fun still, being able to kind of laugh at players or player characters going down and making new ones. I mean, the one player I had, he made one campaign, he made at least 10, 11 characters, but he was fine with it. Um, Mainly he lost his characters because of bad decisions or just bad rolling nights, you know, it happens. Um, and uh, it's funny that uh, in virtual tabletops, the rolling of the dice like really can be one way or the other, like monster heavy or player heavy, uh, unlike being in a social environment, because um, the scale is so crazy on Foundry and Roll Twenty for in terms of the roll scale. It really, it really is shocking. Um, but anyway. 
that is really advice for giving people um, how to make a Dark Souls 5e sort of run at it. And uh, maybe you have your own ideas. But always, always keep in mind that you're, you want to keep your players entertained and enjoyable. Um, you know, losing a, a player character every session sucks, right? Uh, you know, and just make your players aware of the challenge that's going to be provided here. Okay? So uh, that is this video.